everyone. I hope that all of you are having a great time preparing for your SPM exam. Are you prepared yet? In today's video, we're going to discuss about paper 2, Pahang paper. And this paper is two and a half hours. Okay, and it consists of three sections, which are A, B, and C. So for section A, you'll be given six questions and you have to answer all the questions. And it carries 40 marks. And in section B, you'll be given five questions and you have to choose four questions. And it's also 40 marks. And the last section is section C, okay, which they give you four questions and you choose two questions. And it carries 20 marks. Okay, so now let's look at question number one. Let's look at question number one. So this question is under the chapter vector. Diagram one shows a trapezium A, B, C, D. So it is given that A, B is equal to 4Y. So where is AB? This is AB. Okay, A to B. And it's 4Y. And AD is equal to 14X. So AD is from A go to D. And this is 14X. Then what is AE? AE is 4 over 7 of AD. So AE, okay, is over here from A go to E. Okay. And it's 4 over 7 of AD. So AD is given as 14X. So times with 14X. Okay, and then we'll get 8x. Okay, so this is 8x. So what is BC? So BC is 5 over 7 of AD. So AD is 14x. So it's equal to 10x. Okay, so therefore BC is equal to 10x. Okay, so now let's solve for A. Express AC in terms of x and y. So where is AC? So AC is over here, from A go to C. Okay, so let's solve this. Okay, I'm going to write it here. So to find AC, we have to use AB, okay, A to B, plus B to C. So AB plus BC, okay? So equals to vector AB plus with vector BC. Okay, what is vector AB? So vector AB is 4y. And what is vector BC? So vector BC is 10x. Okay, and then we rearrange it so that the x comes first and then only y. So 10x plus with 4y. Okay? Okay, so that's the answer for A. Then B, point F lies inside the trapezium ABCD. So F is over here. Okay, this is F such that 4EF equals to KAB. Okay, so we're going to use this 4EF equals to KAB to find the answer for B1, okay, which is vector AF. So 4EF equals to KAB. So 4EF is equals to K. So AB, we know that is 4Y in the diagram. So it'll be 4Y. Then we can cancel off the 4 and 4 on both sides. So EF is equal to KY. Okay, so now we can find the vector AF. So to find AF, so where is AF? So AF is over here, A to F. Okay, and then EF is here. So EF is from E to F. And then AF is A to F. Okay, so we can actually use AE plus EF. Okay, equals to AE plus EF. So equals, okay, so what is AE? So AE in the question, okay, just now we got the AE from here, which is 8X. So it's 8X. Okay, and what is EF? Just now we got here, EF is equals to KY. So plus with KY. Okay, and then in the question, let's read the question again. They say express AF in terms of K, X and Y. So we have k, x, and y in our answer. So that will be the final answer. Okay, now, now we can solve b2. Okay, b2. Hence, if the points a, f, c are collinear, find the value of k. So what's the meaning of collinear? Collinear means the three points, which is which are a, f, and c, they lie on the same line. Okay, so we are going to use the lambda. So how to solve this? Okay, I'm going to start off with AC equals to lambda AF. Okay, AC equals to lambda AF. Okay, so AC from the question, 
Okay, in A, we got the answer as 10x plus 4y. Can you see the top here? Okay, 10x plus 4y. So I'm going to write it over here. 10x plus 4y. Okay, equals to lambda. And then AF, okay, we got the answer from the question B1. Okay, which is 8x plus ky. So 8x plus ky. So from here, I'm going to expand the right hand side. So 8 lambda x plus k lambda y. Okay, and then after that, I'm going to compare both sides. The coefficient for x and the coefficient for y to find the value of k. Okay, so here, 10 is equal to 8 lambda. Okay, so 10 is equal to 8 lambda. So therefore, lambda is 10 divided by 8. We simplify it, we get 5 over 4. Okay, that would be the value of lambda. But they want you to find the value of k. So how? Okay, I'm going to compare the coefficient for y. 4 is equal to k lambda. Okay, so 4 is equal to k lambda. So lambda we already gotten just now, 5 over 4. So we just sub inside. So this is 5 over 4. So to find k, so k is equal to 4 times 4 over 5. So 4 times with 4 over 5. Okay, and then we will get 16 over 5. So that will be the answer. Now let's look at question number 2. So this question is under the chapter statistics. Table 1 shows the distribution of number of questions answered by 40 students in a competition. So we know that the total frequency is 40. Okay, so they give you a table which is number of questions and also frequency. So find the interquartile range and B, the number of students that answered at least 21 questions. Okay, so this is 4 marks and 1 mark. So to find the interquartile range without using the ogive, so how? Okay, so we're going to use the median formula. So remember the median formula? Okay, let me show you. So median formula, okay, is equal to L plus half N minus capital F, which is the cumulative frequency, over the frequency of the median class in bracket times with C. C is the size of the class. Okay, L is the lower boundary. So we're going to use this formula as a reference. Okay, so how are we going to do this? Okay, this one as a reference only, uh, reference, uh, because they're not asking us to find median. Okay, so we actually don't have to write this down, but it's just as our reference. Okay, so to find the interquartile range, so interquartile range is actually the third quartile minus the first quartile. So you're going to find the first quartile and the third quartile first, okay, by using the median formula as a reference. Okay, so to find the interquartile range, Q1. So I'm going to write it over here, Q1. Okay, so to find Q1, we're going to use the L. Okay, so first we know that the total frequency is 40. Okay, that's the total frequency. So to find the first quartile, I'm going to use a quarter times with 40, which is 10. So the 10th value will be where? Okay, the 10th data will be at which class? So before that, we're going to find, we're going to do another extra column for cumulative frequency. Okay, let's make another column. I said I'm going to make it over here, okay, for cumulative frequency, which is my capital F. Okay, so the first one will be 2. 2 plus 9 is 11. 11 plus 10 is 21. 21 plus 8 is 29. 29 plus 8 is 37. 37 plus 3 is 40. So if your last number is equivalent to the total frequency, then your table will be correct okay so now to find the 10th data where is it so 10 data will be in this class okay because the first class can only fit two okay so the third third fourth fifth six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen until the 13 it will be in the second class okay so this one i find what is my l1 so my L1 is the lower boundary of the class. So the lower boundary of the class, I'm going to use 6 plus 5, okay? 6 plus 5, the 5 one is the before that, the class before that, okay? So 11 divided by 2, 6 plus 5 is 11, then divided by 2, we get 5.5. That's how we get our lower boundary. Okay, so 5.5, okay? So next is, we need to know what is our FM. 
So this will be our FM because it's the frequency of that class. Okay? And then we need to find the big F. The big F is the cumulative frequency before that class. Okay? So this will be the capital F. F. Okay? So next one. Okay, we're going to put this into the Q1. So our Q1 would be 5.5. Okay? Plus with, I'm going to use a quarter times the total M. The N. Okay? Total frequency is 40. Okay? Then after that, I'm going to minus the cumulative frequency before that class, which is 2. Okay, that one just now I already labeled in the, at the top, F, you see or not, F equals to 2. Okay, over here, here. Ah. So, then after that, before that, there's an over FM. So, whole thing over, what is the FM? FM is 9, so 9. Okay, times with the C. C is the size of class. So, to find C, Okay, our C is actually lower boundary minus upper boundary. Upper boundary minus lower boundary. So upper boundary, let's say I'm going to choose the, the L1 class. Okay, so the upper boundary is 10.5 minus the lower boundary is 5.5. So 10.5 minus 5.5 is equal to 5. So this is 5. Okay, so equals to, okay, we use the calculator to calculate. So we calculate the bracket one first, okay? A quarter times 40 is 10. So 10 minus 2, after that divided by 9, then times with 5, okay? After that, we plus with 5.5, okay? We get 9.944. So I'm going to write it down, 9.944. So now we got our Q1 already, okay? Next, we need to find what is our Q3, which is the third quartile. Okay, to find Q3, Okay, I'm going to use what is the 3 quarter of 40. So 3 quarter of 40 is 30. So the 30th class, okay, because it's under 29, until 29th. Okay, so the 30th will be in this class. Okay, so this class, 21 to 25. So that one I would put as L3. So the lower boundary for this class is 21 plus 20 divided by 2 is 20.5. Okay, so it's 20.5. That will be our L3. Then, this is, will be our frequency of that class. Okay? For L3. And then, the accumulated frequency before that class would be this one. Equals to F. That would be the accumulated frequency before that class. Okay? So now, we can put into the formula. So, L3 will be 20.5. Okay? Plus with a quarter, or we use three quarter this time. Okay? 3 quarter times with 40. After that, we minus the cumulative frequency before the class is 29. Okay. Then over the FM, which is 8. Okay. And then times with the C, which is 5. Okay. So let's use the calculator and calculate. Yeah. So 3 quarter times 40 minus 29. Then divided by 8 and then times with 5. And then plus 20.5. Okay, that's how we use the calculator to calculate. And we get 21.125. Okay, so it's 21.125. Okay, so to find the interquartile range, how are we going to find? Okay, this will be A, yeah? it's for A. Okay, so to find the answer, I'm going to write it over. Okay, here I'm going to use Q3 minus Q1. Okay, so Q3 is 21.125 minus 9.944. Okay, so equals to, let's calculate, is it a calculator? 21.125 minus 9.944 is equals to 11.181. Okay, equals to 11.181. Okay, that will be the answer for interquartile range. Now, let's solve for B. Okay, find the number of students that answered at least 21 questions. Okay, answer at least 21 questions means uh, from here, go to 30. Okay, so which means that it's 8 plus 3 people. Okay, 8 plus 3 students. Okay, so for B, the answer is 8 plus 3 equals to 11 students. That will be the answer. 
Now let's look at question number 3. So this chapter is under the chapter differentiation. The curve y equals to ax plus b over x squared has a gradient function of 2 plus 16 over x cubed. So where a and b are constants. So find the values of a and b, 3 marks, and b, find the turning point of the curve. So the turning point means we're going to use dy dx equals to 0. So hence determine whether the turning point is a minimum or a maximum point. So for this, we're going to use the second derivative, which is finding the d square y over dx square. Okay, so now let's solve for a. So for a, I'm going to use y equals to a plus ax plus b over x squared. And I'm going to find the dy dx. After that, I'm going to compare with this dy dx. Okay, to find the values of a and b. So this one I change to index form ax plus bx negative 2. Okay, after that I find what is the dy dx. So equals to a, then minus 2b, then x negative 3. Then I change back to fractional form. So a minus 2b over x cubed. Okay, after that I'm going to compare with the one that they give us in the question which is 2 plus 16 over x cubed. So 2 plus 16 over x cubed. Then I'm going to compare both sides. So our a is equals to 2. Okay, so a is equals to 2. And then let's find for b. So negative 2b is equals to 16. Okay. So negative 2b is equal to 16. So therefore, b is equal to 16 divided by negative 2 is negative 8. So that will be the answer for a. Now let's solve for b. To find the turning point, we start off our working with dy dx equals to 0. Okay, so dy dx that they give us in the question is 2 plus 16 over x cubed. So 2 plus 16 over x cubed equals to 0. Okay. So let's solve this. So 16 over x cubed equals to negative 2. So 16 over negative 2 equals to x cubed, which is negative 8. So to find x, we're going to cube root negative 8, which is negative 2. So that will be the x value. After that, I'm going to substitute this x value into the y equation. Okay, so let's solve for y, find y. So because previously, okay, in the question, they give us this. But we've already gotten the values for a and b. So we're going to sub the a and b values inside first, okay? So ax plus b over x squared. Okay, so y is equals to, so a is 2, so 2x, okay? And b is negative 8, so negative 8 over x squared. Okay, so this will be the y. So we need to substitute the x value into the y to get the value of y. Then we will get the turning point. So y is equals to so 2 times negative 2 minus 8 over negative 2 square okay so you have to be very careful 2 times negative 2 is negative 4 then minus 8 over negative 2 whole thing square is 4 okay so we get this is negative 4 so 8 divided by 4 is 2 so we get negative 6 so therefore the turning point is negative 2 negative 6. Okay, that would be the answer. Then, they say, hence, determine whether the turning point is a minimum or a maximum point. So from here, I need to differentiate one more time. Okay, so I can use from here, from this dy dx. Okay, the dy dx that we've gotten is, okay, I'm going to dy dx, find the dy dx first. Okay, which is 2 plus 16 over x cubed. So 2 plus 16 x negative 3 lah. Okay, we change to this form. So equals to, so 2 when differentiate it becomes 0. 16 times negative 3 is negative 48. And then x, the power minus 1. So it becomes negative 48 over x power 4. Okay, then from here, I substitute the x value that we gotten just now, which is negative 2. So negative 48 divided by negative 2 whole thing power 4. Okay, so this will be negative 48 over, so negative 2 holding power 4 is positive 16. So when you divide negative 48 divided by 16, you will get negative 3. And this is less than 0. 
if it's less than zero, it means that it is a maximum point. So right there, maximum point. So that will be the answer. Well, that's all for now. Stay tuned to my next video, which is question four to six, paper two, coming up very, very soon. Like this video if you like it, subscribe to my channel if you haven't, and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye!